morning everyone. I'm Congressman Adam Schiff. Next morning will mark the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. 100 years since 1.5 million men, women and children were brutally and systematically killed by the Ottoman Empire simply because they were Armenian. 100 years since millions more were driven from their homes and their possessions. The Ottoman campaign to wipe out the Armenian people failed as evidenced by the proud Armenian nation and by the many members of the Armenian diaspora in the United States and around the world. But the memories of those lost are carried in nearly every Armenian household. It is with those 1.5 million victims of genocide in mind, as well as the handful of remaining survivors and the millions of descendants of those who survived the massacre, that we announce the introduction of the new House Resolution recognizing the Armenian Genocide and calling upon the President to work with the Turkish and Armenian governments to bring about a reconciliation that is based upon a full acknowledgement of the historic fact of the Armenian Genocide. This resolution states in simple and plain language the historic facts of the genocide and the degree to which genocide denial on the part of the Turkish government continues to hamstring the chances for peace and stability in the region. I'm proud to stand here today with my colleagues who have all championed the cause of genocide recognition. Together we say that it is our moral obligation to speak the truth about what occurred and the atrocities that were endured, whether it is easy or hard to speak of and whether it happened yesterday or a century ago. I'm happy now to turn the podium over to my colleague Robert Dold of Illinois, the sponsor of the resolution. Thank you all for being here. As the eyes of the world focus on ISIS and on the brutal killings of innocent Christians in the Middle East, we must recognize the horrors of the past if we hope to avoid repeating the future. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, during which the Ottoman Turks systematically exterminated over 1.5 million Armenians and Christian minorities. The genocide is a fact that cannot be ignored. It is settled history. Turkey, however, has never accepted responsibility and has continued to hide behind tactics that shroud violations of human rights. Even as 11 of our NATO allies and 42 U.S. states have recognized Turkey's leading role in this atrocity. The continued campaign of denial sets a dangerous precedent that makes future atrocities unlikely. While ordering his military leaders to attack Poland, Adolf Hitler rationally So I don't 
would have suggested it's going to be an easy task, but it is still our major priority uh, in the Armenia Caucus. Uh, I also want to say that I believe that uh, this is inevitable. If you look around every year, we see more recognition by, uh, by other nations. activity within Turkey itself by scholars, common people, elected officials uh, who recognize the genocide. But just because uh, it's inevitable that the recognition takes place even in the United States doesn't mean that we don't have to try hard because it is, it is a, a, a tough task. But I, I want to thank everyone within the Armenian diaspora because I know how hard you work on this. educating the average person about the fact that the genocide uh, did in fact occur. And lastly, going back to what uh, Congressman Bob leadership to this issue. the Armenian Genocide was introduced uh, in 1975. Imagine that. 1975. So uh, 40 years later, we are still laboring to have the government of the United States of America recognize and acknowledge that this has taken place. And so once again, we introduce this resolution. And the resolution very direct because it calls on the President of the United States to work toward an equitable, constructive, stable, and durable Armenian-Turkish uh, relations based upon the Republic of Turkey's full acknowledgement of the facts and ongoing consequences of the Armenian Genocide and a fair, just, and comprehensive international resolution of this crime against humanity. Now, in terms of history, candidate Obama was eloquent in terms of recognizing that the Armenian Genocide actually happened. And so it is very important to understand uh, why we are calling on President Obama to continue and match the words that he spoke when he was a candidate. Now, history does repeat itself. Today, we are seeing the elimination of Christians across the Middle East. And so, history is repeating itself. The Armenian Genocide took place because Armenians were Christians. They had a mark on them. And the Christians in the Middle East today are suffering uh, at the hands of yet others who uh, seek to exterminate them. Uh, so 42 states in our country have recognized this. NATO allies have recognized the genocide. So 
thank you again to all the advocates. Uh, it's an honor to be an original co-sponsor of this. I've been on them since I entered the Congress. And uh, hopefully this, in the 100th anniversary, we will honor those that lost their lives at the hands of the Ottoman Empire uh, to remind the world that yet again, the genocide is taking place. Thank you. Jackie Spear. I want to thank my colleagues for joining us in the introduction of this resolution to all of you for joining us today. I'm a proud Armenian American. I'm also a paid Armenian American because our Congress has not seen fit to do the very least that we can do in recognizing the Armenian genocide. of the Armenians. The international community, including the United States, ignored the Armenians' pleas for help. It's history now, but it's time for us to recognize it once and for all. It is time for all of those who have heard the stories of our family members, uh, who have felt the pain, to finally be released from that. And I thank you all for being here. Representative Dave Tri. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I think it's important we gather this morning and uh, reflect on the tragedies that occurred 100 years ago. I think it's important the world community in the United States in Turkey acknowledge uh, the atrocities that have occurred, the genocide. And uh, I think Congress, I'm new here, I've only been here a few months, but it's hard for me to fathom why we're still debating and discussing this topic. We need to move forward with this resolution. I'm a proud sponsor of it. It's important for the community. It's important for my district. And I appreciate you all being here. And I won't talk any longer. It's uh, from Michigan, but it's still cold to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Judy Chu. Well, I'm in the middle of a bill markup, but I just had to be here uh, to be an original co-sponsor of the Armenian Genocide Truth and Justice Resolution. As a representative from California's San Gabriel Valley, I'm privileged to represent such an active and vibrant Armenian American community with more than 125 years of history in this country. Thanks to the community, have been brought so much closer to their Armenian people and their history. And in fact, I had the distinct honor of celebrating the 104th birthday of an Armenian genocide survivor in my district. Although he passed away a few months ago, this amazing individual uh, and his story stays with me every day. He knew the truth of what he lived through, and we know the truth as well. The truth is that one and a half million lives were lost, roadside corpses left by mass murders for all to see, women and children were forced to march through the desert, and the U.S. ambassador called this the death warrant to a whole race. We must also never forget those who survived and bore the genocide's horrendous scars, those who escaped the genocide, started new lives, raised families, and put their roots down in America. With the Armenian 
genocide centennial quickly approaching, we must stand shoulder to shoulder with the Armenian American community and on the side of justice. We will not give up until our country stands on the side of history. Thank you. Representative Brad Sherman. <laughs> Hello, I'm Brad Sherman from California's best name city, Sherman Oaks. We are here to recognize the 100th anniversary of the first genocide of the 20th century. This is a genocide that Senator Barack Obama recognized, that Senator Kerry recognized, that the UN ambassador, Ms. Powers, recognized and wrote the book on. And it is Sorry. time for both the executive branch and the legislative branch to do the same. We have displayed, I, we have done so much to try to put the United States on the right side of history. This is important for who we are as a people and our role in world leadership. It is also important for those who dream of a reconciliation between Armenia and its neighbors. We have had truth and reconciliation commissions work in so many places around the world, dealing with conflicts that people thought could never be solved. But we have never had a successful falsehood and cover-up commission or strategy. And that is why conflicts continue that could otherwise be dealt with. We need to show the government of Turkey that we cannot be cowed, that we cannot ignore history, because genocide denial is not just the last step of a genocide, it is the first step in the next genocide. And I believe that you are all aware of how Adolf Hitler was able to point to the genocide of the Armenians and convince his cohorts that they too would be successful saying, who now speaks of the annihilation of the Armenians? Not only is this critical for America's role, it's critical for Turkey to step forward. How would America have an alliance with a government in Berlin that denied the Holocaust? How would we assume world leadership if we denied slavery? Only when Turkey comes to grips with its own past, only when Turkey passes a genocide resolution will Turkey be a modern country worthy of the role that it wishes to play on the world scene. So I look forward to reminding Turkey that after $23 billion in aid, after saving them from communism, we no longer owe it to some elements of the Turkish government that we act like cowards and deny the truth. It is time for us finally to pass this resolution in the hundredth year of remembering the Armenian genocide. Now I'd like to invite Arm Hamparian of the ANCA, ANCA to come say a few words. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman Schiff, Congressman Dold, uh, Congressman Valadeo, and Pallone, uh, our two Armenian American uh, members, Congressman Anna Eshu, uh, Jackie Speer, uh, Congressman Sherman, Congresswoman Chu. Thank you. All. For far too long, America has pursued, the Obama administration and those that have preceded it have pursued a flawed and ultimately failed approach to the Armenian Genocide issue. One that essentially outsources our policy on this issue to the Republic of Turkey. One that allows a foreign nation to impose a gag rule on how we can speak about a human rights abuse. It's time for a new approach, a justice-based approach, one that will promote peace because we know that the only durable foundation for Armenians and Turks to build a brighter future together is a just resolution of the Armenian Genocide. We need a new approach that will protect Armenia because we know, because we know that Armenia cannot be safe bordered by an overarmed and unrepentant perpetrator of genocide. And finally, because we know that a justice-based approach will help prevent future atrocities, genocide Genocides committed with impunity, contributed uh, to other genocides, impunity against impunity, genocide against genocide. This new approach, the Armenian Genocide Truth and Justice Resolution, serves these important purposes. We very much value the support of our, our friends in Congress in supporting this measure and look forward to 
with your support as well. Thank you. Final speaker, Brian Arduni of the Armenian Assembly. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Resolutions affirming the truth, affirming America's role in helping save the survivors of the first genocide of the 20th century are not only important, but necessary. They are necessary because of ongoing efforts by a foreign nation to and rewrite our own history. And we should never let this happen. America's humanitarian intervention during the Armenian Genocide was unprecedented and something that we can all be proud of. It was America's ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, Henry Morgenthau, that alerted, alerted the world that a quote-unquote campaign of race extermination was underway against the Armenian people. It was America's president, Woodrow Wilson, that authorized a military mission to the region led by Major General James Harbord. Harbord, who wrote his report on the USS Martha Washington, said that what happened was, and I quote, a colossal, well not the A, but a colossal crime for all the ages. It was America that created the Near East Relief and with the generosity of the American people, provided over 116 million in relief to the survivors, including 132,000 orphans. And it was these orphans, young Armenian girls, the rug, which was presented to President Calvin Coolidge as a symbol of sincere gratitude for America's generosity and humanitarian relief. The inscription on the rug read, and I quote, made by Armenian in the Gazir Syrian orphanage of the Near East Relief and presented as a golden rule token of appreciation to President Coolidge. As Americans, we should embrace our history and not allow others to try to sweep our history under the rug. Therefore, on the centenary of the Armenian Genocide, we strongly urge Congress and the President to unequivocally affirm the Armenian Genocide and honor America's humanitarian intervention at that time, which was unprecedented. Thank you. To conclude, I, I want to reiterate something that my colleague Anna Eshu said, and that is uh, our deep gratitude for the extraordinary work that has been done by the Armenian organizations in diaspora. We wouldn't have a chance in this fight without those extraordinary take maybe a couple of quick questions and then if there are faults perhaps we can take those in the building. But uh, does anyone have a, a quick question or two? Congressman, uh, you've tried for 40 years in the past. This has, first, has any resolution passed by either House yes. or Senate? Yeah. Yes. yes, we have had resolutions passed. I think the last time though was not since 1985. Okay, since it's been passed once, why do it again? I think this is something we ought to do every year. I think the United States ought to commit itself to recognition of genocide wherever and whenever it occurs. Uh, and as uh, Representative Pallone points out, this is uh, no matter of uh, historic uh, uh, insignificance. In addition to the fact that this crime we see the same kind of uh, uh, brutal killings going on in the very place where the Armenian genocide took place. Uh, in the killing fields in Syria where uh, hundreds of thousands were marched to their death, we see now efforts akin uh, uh, efforts to wipe out an entire uh, religious community, uh, and I think it's more important than ever that, that we recognize the genocide. Sort of my colleagues, but I also feel that while there are survivors among us, the, the moral urgency is all the greater uh, to get this done now. Adam, 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 Adam if I could try that on that question, please. the reason we need to do it the now microphone, please. is because of the denial. Yeah, you the the okay. The reason we need to pass this resolution is because of the denial. I don't know if we need an annual resolution to remember the Holocaust. It wouldn't be a bad thing, but there is no denial. But the fact that uh, Turkey denies this genocide is why uh, America has got to join more, uh, many, many other countries in recognizing what actually happened at the beginning of the 20th century 100 years ago. How many legislators support the Armenian Genocide Resolution at this point? Is, is there any reaction from the Egyptian branch? Uh, the resolution against policy. I think we can 
right now, I know, I think it's 46 co-signers right now, but that was, those were original co-sponsors of the resolution. This has always been the struggle for us. Uh, we have to have it taken up in committee first. Um, in the past uh, 10 years, we've had it taken up twice in the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, both times it nearly passed out of the committee, but we have not succeeded in getting a vote on the floor. Ultimately, that will be up to the House leadership. Uh, we will continue to be pressing the House leadership to take this up. Uh, and I think uh, at the end of the day, if not now, uh, when? Is it a policy of the leadership that it wouldn't come to the floor until you get 218 co-sponsors? I, I don't think there has been an explicit policy about that. And there have been times in the past where we have had over 218 uh, co-sponsors, but have not been able to bring it up. Um, I think at the end of the day, the leadership has to make the decision. Uh, it's willing to bring this to, the vo to a vote, uh, willing to put it to the members, because all of us uh, that have been here in prior Congresses have been part of a whipping effort on the genocide. Uh, and to be candid, there are plenty of our colleagues who would rather not have to vote on this. Uh, and, at the, and you simply don't know until the day you take it up for a vote where people are going to stand. Uh, so we have to be willing to take it up and put people on record. as hard as we can to make this year the year that that happens. I think that there is uh, something else to be added to this equation. Make no mistake about this. The Turkish lobby lobbies very hard against this, and they hold sway with members. So uh, this isn't just some internal uh, misarrangement uh, between leadership and members, uh, while we have our own process uh, that's been described, uh, uh, that lobby is a uh, is a very effective one, and so uh, we think uh, that we need to match that and go over the top. And uh, uh, if there's anything to be said about the effort, uh, we haven't given up. And uh, there are bracelets that have been made. And it says, we will never forget. So we're going to keep going. Can you hold that back up for a minute? Yeah. Last question, yes. There were, um, <coughs> there were hopeful signs under President Erdogan in the beginning of the conciliation. There were positive signs, the reopening of a church for the first time in 100 years. Do you think that you can since backtrack on some of that? And, and the second follow-up to that would be, do you think this helps or hinders the legislation the have to underway in the first year? Let me take a step and then I'll invite my colleagues to as well. Uh, I was in Ankara uh, late last year and had a chance to raise this with President Erdogan. Uh, it was not my sense at all that he is uh, committed to a even a free and open dialogue about this in Turkey. We have uh, seen some backtracking, but I don't think there was ever really that commitment in the first place. But many of the Turkish actions along these lines are designed to thwart recognition in this country. Uh, each year there's a different uh, argument made. Well, we are establishing a reconciliation or a truth-finding commission, therefore this is the wrong year. Uh, we have uh, 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 made a statement acknowledging that bad things happened in 1915, 1923, therefore we don't need to have this. Uh, the reality is I think that what we are doing here really propels uh, Turkey to move forward. And, uh, and I think we just can't let up on that pressure. But how how does it propel Turkey to move forward if it really meets the government? Well, I, I think that uh, pressure by the American government on, on Turkey forces Turkey to confront this issue. Uh, they would be perfectly happy to sweep this under the carpet. Uh, I think the only reason that they make these efforts every April uh, is because they feel compelled to. Uh, and in part, it gives them a, uh, a justification uh, for their lobbyists that uh, Representative Eshoo mentioned to 
come here and say this is not necessary because look what we're already doing. Uh, in the absence of those efforts, I don't think we even would see these minimal steps taken by Turkey. Uh, well, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you very much.